desire becomes surrender, surrender becomes power. It all begins with Leto's turn as the Joker and the methods behind his not so convincing madness. Oh, this is a gift from the Joker. Snake, oh no! <laughs> his version of the villain was an incomprehensible mishmash of contemporary culture. You helped me by erasing my mind. His outfits, first of all, looked like they were snatched right off the back of a Russian mobster. His slicked back monster energy green hair looks like a dyed version of G-Eazy's and carries with it the same barbered try-hard vibe. Are you sweet talking me? Ah, ah, ah. Then there are his tattoos. The ones on his body look like the results of a clip art directory search for Joker. The ones on his face are the result of taking Lil Wayne's face tats and filtering them through an expensive Warner Brothers focus group. You don't want Why, no beef, wrong? you don't want no beef. And then he's got some type of grills or caps on his teeth that look much more like fillings for cavities, which I guess could represent a tendency toward bad boy hedonism in not brushing his teeth and eating too much candy. In short, this is a confused look. <laughs> then there's the method acting. Did I never thought in a million years that I would have the chance to play a role like this. Leto's antics on set have been well documented, but it's worth going over them once again for those of you who don't know. During the table read, he sent Margot Robbie a live rat, which was followed 20 minutes later by a pig carcass filled with bullets. That's too easy. To top it off, Leto apparently sent used condoms to most of his co-stars. He said in his own defense, at least they were used. I did a lot of things to create a dynamic, to create an element of surprise, a spontaneity, and to really break down any kind of walls that may be there. By the way, I've got some grape soda on ice and a bearskin rub waiting. Yeah? The Joker is somebody who doesn't really respect things like personal space or boundaries. Needless to say, the people at Warner Brothers have not been enthusiastic about rehiring Leto. Instead of giving him his own Joker movie, the studio went with Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix's version, which has paid major dividends for them. But Jared Leto feels left behind. The Hollywood Reporter reports that he bitterly complained to the agency that represented him, which he left this summer presumably over this whole disagreement. He even tried to get the movie cancelled through the guy who manages his band, 30 Seconds to Mars. Why is Leto so butthurt? After all, he did kind of dig his own grave. Here are a few possibilities. Jared Leto is not happy. His future as the Joker has been cancelled and the character's reigns have been handed over to Joaquin Phoenix. So what exactly is Leto saying and why is he so mad? Let's find out. This is an obvious one, but Joaquin Phoenix's version is just a better movie. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. Joker is so much more entertaining, the title character is so much more human, and it's got some cool political subtext too. Relax. Suicide Squad, on the other hand, was a bust. It was directionless, loud, and disappointing. Take a look at their Rotten Tomatoes numbers, for example. Or here's an excerpt from the Wall Street Journal's review of the movie. In a word, Suicide Squad is trash. In two words, it's ugly trash. Maybe no more words should be wasted on a movie that is, after all, only a movie, not a natural disaster or a terrorist attack. This bird is baked. Still, movies contribute to the collective awareness. They can color the way we feel about the life around us. This one deserves further attention by virtue of its exceptional cynicism and startling ineptitude. Suicide Squad amounts to an all-out attack on the whole idea of entertainment. This review is not an outlier. Pretty much everyone feels this way about the movie. Other reviews have called it a big budget thud, as well as simply ugly and boring. Phoenix was also much more pleasant than Leto. By all accounts, he was a joy to work with, although hearing that laugh every day must do something to a person. <laughs> his performance was a performance for the screen, not for his co-stars. Then there's the fact that his name is now being tossed around for award consideration. Speaking of awards considerations, these must be in the forefront of Jared Leto's mind. He is now 47 years old, the same age as Canada's Prime Minister, even though he looks like he's been frozen in time. 
According to The Guardian, the average age for someone to win Best Actor is 44. That means Jared Leto is nearing the tail end of his award-getting window. In losing Joker, he also loses a major opportunity to get the Best Lead Actor Oscar. Full house. Jack's ever three. And, on a more basic note, Leto is probably also disappointed that he's out of a job. For playing such a minor role in Suicide Squad, he got paid almost seven million dollars. <laughs> With all the antics and disappointments surrounding Leto's role, do you think he should have been given a second chance? Should he be arrested for harassing his co-stars? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to CBR.